Well, hello and welcome to From the Rector's Study. It's the 7th of March, it's the third Lord's Day of Lent. I hope that you're well. Uh, let's uh, start uh, by uh, by getting our focus in the right place, shall we? There, there are so many things going on, um, all sorts of things uh, constantly distracting us, um, uh, and all sorts of important things. But the most important thing is always for us to hear from God in his word. So let's get our focus on that as we start. Uh, let's, uh, our psalm for the day is Psalm 19, so let's read that together. Uh, will you read that with me? The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out throughout the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, in which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The Lord, the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent of hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The psalmist there, he, he talks about uh, the glory of God, God's greatness, his goodness, his, his splendour, how it's displayed in the whole of creation. Uh, the heavens declare the, the glory of the God, God he says, that, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Uh, it is constant, the speech about him, that the universe is shouting about God endlessly. Uh, it does so everywhere and all the time, so that no one is excluded from that, that proclamation, that God is there, God is good, God is great. more than that the psalm, because the psalmist knows that that's not the, the sum of the speech about God, we have God's own speech about himself in his word, in the Bible and the psalmist goes on, speaking about God, the glory of God shown in creation to speak about the glory of God shown in his word the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandments of the Lord, and so on. The, the difference is, is that creation shouts about God, and it's out there. God's word speaks, and it refreshes my soul. It makes me wise. It, it, it changes my heart. It has that power. Which is why the psalmist says, well, more to be desired are they than gold. These are the most precious things. Uh, that, that, that's why in, in our coronation service, when the, the newly crowned monarch is crowned, then, then they are handed a Bible and told this is the most precious thing this world affords. It's incredible, isn't it, that the, you know, the, the wearing uh, the, the, the crown with, with some of the largest diamonds in the world, with the, the, the scepter and the orb and all. Well, those look like some of the most precious things that this world affords, but no. Here is the most precious thing that the world affords. Why? These are the lively oracles of God. This is the, God's living word. Uh, it's precious and it's sweet, sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. I don't know what, what you had for breakfast this morning. If you had honey on toast, well, you know, that's sweet and it's beautiful, isn't it? God's word is sweeter because it shows us his goodness and it brings life to us. 
which is why the psalmist stands in prayer. God, be at work in my heart through you. By, by your word I am warned, make me blameless so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. When we come to God in prayer, uh, in a way that echoes that of the, the psalmist praying that God would be at work in us and confessing the ways that we have not listened to either the speech of creation about his glory or his own speech in his word. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. It's a moment of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Well, our first hymn, uh, it, it's, a, it's a psalm, it's Psalm, psalm 51, uh, words of which are echoed in our prayer of confession. Uh, you, even if you're not familiar with the words, well, you'll know the, the tune. It, it's, uh, it's one of the tunes for Rock of Ages. God be merciful to me. <laughs>
what the psalmist there praying for God's mercy and of course the wonderful assurance of the gospel is that God is merciful that's, that's why, the, why the psalmist can cry that oh God be merciful to me according to your steadfast love well you'll remember that uh, we have uh, we've been working through Matthew's gospel uh, and we're well we're in chapter 15 so if you've got a Bible you might like to open that and turn to Matthew 15. Uh, I can start to read from verse 10. And Jesus called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. This defiles a person. Then the Pharisees came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees... The, then the disciples came and said to him, Sorry, do you know that the Pharisees were upset, offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone, they are blind guides, and if the blind lead the blind, they will both fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see? that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled, but whatever comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to wash with unwashed, to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Eternal God, give us insight to discern your will for us to give up what harms us, and to seek the perfection we are promised in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's been interesting seeing some of my memories on social media, uh, reminding me that well, it, it is just 12 months ago that we were sort of uh, launching into this um, adventure that has been COVID-19. Um, it's been an interesting time hasn't it uh, and I, I'm, one of the things that, that I was reminded of was how yes we were all getting used 12 months ago to washing our hands every five minutes you know washing our hands you know singing happy birthday or saying the Lord's Prayer it takes the same amount of time and I remember so I was washing my hands so much that you know, they were constantly dry and you know almost painful Now I mention that because of the context here in Matthew 15. If you are with us last week, uh, you'll remember that uh, the presenting issue at the beginning of the chapter, and this is going to be what, what dominates uh, really for most of the chapter, uh, all, all pretty much right to the end uh, of the chapter 15, uh, that some of the Pharisees and scribes have come to Jesus and said, why do your disciples not eat with unwashed hands? So hand washing is key. Uh, of course we're dealing with, with sort of ritual hand washing, it, so it's not so much about an issue of hygiene, but, but hand washing is the presenting issue. Uh, we saw last week that, that Jesus discerns that really there are two issues here. That, that there are, you know, if you want to be uh, fancy about it and, and borrow your categories from Aristotle that there, there is a formal and a material course that there is the stuff of the question what is it they're actually asking about well, they're asking about hand washing you know and that and so that is the issue about what makes a person acceptable or unacceptable to God that that question of, of how can I actually be accepted by God what makes me clean what makes me unclean? What will defile? What will make me whole? That that that's the stuff of the question. But the 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 prior question, that the question that's going to shape and determine what answer you give to that, it, it is a question about authority and about knowledge. How do I know? By what standard? On what basis am I going to answer this question? It, it, it's a it's a crucial question whatever issue you're being presented with and certainly for any of those big issues of life what do you think is right about this 
Why don't you do that? How can I be saved? How can I be forgiven? How can I have peace? By what standard am I going to answer that question? And we saw last week that well, the Pharisees and the religious leaders, they are bringing their human traditions, that, that, that is the thinking of, of their society, to bear on that. And Jesus shows that when you do that, in fact when you apply anything other than God's word as your standard, you will end up a slave. You'll end up a slave to what other people think. You'll end up a slave to, to all sorts of duties that, that really are unnecessary. But instead, God's word sets us free. And as, and as it does, it sets us free to love our neighbours truly and free to love God properly. So that was last week, where Jesus is, is if you like, clearing the decks okay you've asked me this question about hand washing first I got to answer this question on what basis by the Word of God tradition is helpful but it is a servant and not a master then in verse 10 Jesus and answers the question directly and he calls the crowd to him because he does this is an urgent question for everyone he, and he says here in the sand it's not what goes into the mouth and defiles a person uh, and, and he see he's saying hand washing is good in a sense, I mean, the, remember the hand washing that the Pharisees are talking about. What they've they've done is they've taken a, a religious duty that's prescribed by God for the priests for for a particular group of people. So as part of that that whole it would be like means of grace that God has set up so that the priests can uh, provide sacrifices for sin, so that people can have assurance of forgiveness. It's part of that means of grace. And what the Pharisees etc have done is they've taken that and said, well. If, if God's told this particular group to do it, well, it'd be a good thing for everyone to do. And so they've turned what 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 is uh, there as a servant of the means of grace I into a duty and a burden for for everyone. And and hand washing has a role, doesn't it? So you think think about um, the whole issue with what with coronavirus. And things. We, we, we've all done all sorts of things, haven't we? You could have been, you know, th things that we couldn't have imagined doing uh, 12, 13 months ago. We wash our hands. And we wear face masks and all. And all those things are good. And they all work up to a point, don't they? See, washing my hands. Or wearing a face mask will help me keep COVID out of my body. It works because there is an external threat and so long as that threat stays external, stays outside of me, it, it's going to protect me. If I get infected though it's not going to cure me. And that highlights the issue that Jesus has with the hand washing the Pharisees are prescribing. It doesn't go far enough. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of a mouth that defiles a person. Now, one of the, the wonderful things about the gospel, of course, is that we have the the deeply sympathetic characters of the disciples who are just like us. And, and so often ask precisely the questions that we would ask if we were there, or, or the questions that we wish we would ask if, if we weren't too embarrassed. Uh, Peter comes up to Jesus in verse 15 and says, um, Jesus, what were you talking about? Can you un unpack that a little bit? Explain the parable to us. Jesus, 
you know, well, I thought I was fairly straightforward. Do you not see that what goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? What you eat is not, or, or you know, that is not going to make you clean or, or unclean before God. That is not going to defile you. That is not going to determine your acceptability to God. After all, as says Jesus, it's just going to pass through and get flushed away. What it then does defile a person, or what comes out of the mouth, because what comes out of the mouth, says Jesus, proceeds from the heart, and that's what defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. You can keep your hands clean, and great for physical threats like COVID. But that is not going to affect what de defiles you or not. Because the problem isn't external, it is internal. It is shown by, by my words which reflect my heart and what comes and, and there it's evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. It's not even just actions, is it? You see, it's evil thoughts. The, the the problem is that well, washing my hands I'll never get far enough I was reminded of, of the great scene from Shakespeare uh, when I was at school we did Macbeth and Lady Macbeth has this wonderful scene where she is wrestling with her guilt and it's driving her insane Where she says, oh, she's rubbing her hands. Out, damned spot, out, I say. Here's the smell of the blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this ha little hand. Oh, oh, and, and she, she's scrubbing at it. And, and she can't get clean. You ever felt like that? You ever felt like what you really need is a shower from the inside? And what Jesus says is, that's right. And in so doing what he's doing, what he does, just like last week, takes aim at every human system of religion, completely demolishes it, at the same time as showing why they are so attractive. See, the attraction of the system of the Pharisees and any other similar system is, well, I can do it. I just need to make sure that, you know, I pray five times a day or, or I, I go on the right pilgrimage or, 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 or I, 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 I follow the, 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 the right things and, and cancel the, the, the right people on social media. Or, or you, you see the attraction? I know that 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 I I need to do something or something needs to be done to to make me acceptable. I know that that instinctively because my conscience is troubled rightly that there are things that our conscience gets troubled about that it really shouldn't. But there are things our consciences get troubled about that they definitely should and things that our consciences don't get troubled about that they should, that certainly ought to. And, and and so we know that something needs to be done. 
and and all those human systems and approaches well they come and say here you go take this paracetamol five times a day and and you'll be right as rain but Jesus says it cannot work like that however you scrub your hands get out the wire brush and douse them in bleach or it will not get your heart clean that's the problem isn't it you see that that those covid protections work because the threat is external but the problem with sin is it is not external but says jesus it comes from my heart because my heart is sick my heart is defiled uh, that is my heart is well I'm turned in on myself so that I do not love God with all my heart soul mind and strength and I certainly don't love my neighbour as myself I'm curbed in on myself by nature and my heart well it is too full of the love of self and there is no room for the love of God or my neighbour and therefore come out of it evil thoughts and therefore come out of it all the things that would lead to murder if not in act then in thought and that anger or the resentment or, or adultery and sexual immorality again okay? if not in act then in thought theft, false witness, slander my speech and my thought are corrupted and I'm defiled what on earth can be the solution? how can my heart get clean? Jesus here is focusing in on the diagnosis but the gospel as a whole is focused on the treatment see when we understand the problem then suddenly the gospel makes so much more sense if we think our problem is simple and straightforward then we're going to want a simple and straightforward answer but Jesus says no the problem is your heart it goes so much deeper than you think what you need, therefore, is a new heart. I can't do that. I can't change myself. I, I can change some of the outside things. You know, we can get a new look, or, or you know, how many people when in April when, when uh, hairdressers and barber shops open will suddenly look incredibly different. We can change things about ourselves on the outside, but on the inside we cannot change ourselves. I need God to do that. And I need him both to deal with the source of the problem, which is my heart, to change my heart by the power of his spirit. And in fact, that's what the psalm that we started with was promising, that God's Spirit applies God's Word to our hearts. And it changes us. It makes us new. Really, imperfectly in this life, but really. Creating in us a new principle of, of obedience, of life, of, of love. I need the source of the problem dealt with, but I also need the results of the problem. That that if these things come out of my heart and defile me, what am I going to do? I, I, I need that shower on the inside. How can I get clean? We're just over halfway through Matthew's Gospel. And the whole Gospel is driving like a, an unstoppable train towards Holy Week and Easter. And Jesus on the cross, what he does is he takes into himself, like, like a, 
an absorbent sponge all the defilement from my heart and from all those who are his and so that the guilt and the filth that, that would condemn me that in my own conscience and even more before God it's not here anymore it's there and he dies bearing the condemnation that that takes and deserves from God and he goes down into death and rises three days later in new and glorious life and my sin and my guilt is laid dead in the tomb I need a new heart. I need a shower on the inside. And Jesus gives me both when I come to him. I cannot do this. And so we cry out to him to do what we cannot, to be gracious to us. That's picked up in our second song. and faith, let us make our prayer to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. For your holy people, that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for candidates for baptism and confirmation that they may live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and truth, we pray to you, O Lord. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor taken away, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, that they may know your power to heal, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven and see you face to face, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. And so we commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. And the collect for today. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray with confidence. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And our final song fixes our eyes on the cross where Jesus uh, made the way for us to be clean and whole. Oh,
with you. I do hope that you're well uh, and looking after yourself. Um, of course, we one of the the exciting things that's going on at the moment is we've got the sort of roadmap back to uh, well something like normality. Remember that. Um, uh, one of the things that, that that affects is, of course, our church services, and we're looking to, to be regathering physically uh, with, with all sorts of restrictions still, so that will be will still be safe, um, and I'll still be booking things. Uh, we were looking at doing that from next Sunday. I, I think a, a number of people felt that was a bit earlier than they were comfortable with, so we're, we're going to be back two weeks after that, so, so three weeks today are on the 28th of March, that is Palm Sunday, 9 o'clock at St Catherine's, 11 o'clock at St Margaret's Halstead, um, and it would be great to be back, uh, and to celebrate Holy Week together in church. Uh, uh, do check uh, um, uh, the website and, and Facebook and, and emails uh, for, for more information, or if you want to know more, just, just give us a call here at the rectory. Um, uh, but let's close with uh, our final prayer of blessing. So as you get, may you know the grace of God, the Heavenly Father, who, who reaches out to us, who loves us when even our hearts were cold to him. Uh, as you go, may you know the grace of Jesus Christ, who died for you to make you whole. And as you go, may you know the grace of God, the Holy Spirit, at work in you, transforming you and giving you a new heart. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love this week and always. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.